Here's your KNDY updated weatherology forecast for Northeast Kansas and Southeast Nebraska. I'm staff meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Sunny skies today with daytime highs approaching 88. Southerly winds 5 to 10 miles per hour. Clear skies again tonight. Lows of a loft around 61. Daytime highs approaching 87. Tomorrow, ample sunshine expected. I'm staff meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki. Right now, 79. Mid-America Network News. A suspected drunk driver killed former Bueller School District teacher Susan Cameron and left her husband, Dawn, in critical condition Saturday evening in Lenexa. People who knew her say that Susan's legacy goes well beyond lessons from the classroom. The Kansas State Fire Marshal's Office is investigating an incident described as a workplace accident involving a small explosion at a food trailer at the Kansas State Fair in Hutchinson. Emergency services were called around 6.30 p.m. The State Fire Marshal confirms that multiple people were hurt, but none of the injuries are life-threatening. Two people were transported to a local hospital with injuries. A Hutchinson firefighter told KSN a can was on or near a grill and it exploded, which caused a glass window to shatter. I'm Stephanie Austin. Attention Wichita and surrounding communities. The September 10th sale at Midwest Kia is here and you won't want to miss it. For a limited time, drive away in a brand new 2024 Kia Forte LXS for just $199 a month. That's right, only $199. Need something with a little more space? Check out the full-size 2025 Kia K5 LXS. Now available for just $299 a month. That's right, incredible payment options on both the Forte and the K5, but only during our September September 10th sale or save up to $13,000 off MSRP on the EV9 with five different SUV models to choose from. There's something for everyone. Hurry in to the big tick sale at Midwest Kia or online at MidwestKia.com. Midwest Kia, a better way to buy. We want to see you in a Midwest Kia. See dealer for details. Offers in September 30th. Subject to credit approval. Excludes taxes and fees. Winfield, Kansas Fire and EMS is hosting its 7th annual Memorial Stair Climb today. It kicked off this morning at 7.30 a.m. at the Christie Administration Building at Southwestern College. But first responders and community members began showing up at 5 a.m. Year after year, we come out here and we do the stair climb in honor of all the fallen firefighters, the 343 New York Fire Department firefighters, 27 New York PD, and 37 Port Authority officers to honor their memory and never forget them. The Kansas State Fair is going on in Hutchinson. It has been going on since 1901. There are so many things for you to see and do. There are all kinds of 4-H showings. There are pig races. There are rabbits to see, sheep, cow, horses, and, of course, lots of yummy fair food. Check it all out at kansasstatefair.com. I'm Stephanie Austin. Sonic, Sonic Radio. It's time for my favorite segment, Ask the CIO. Hey, caller, you're on. Hi, a big fan. Um, I used to think I could never love another burger more than my favorite. Then I tried the Sonic Smasher. With its tangy smasher sauce, melty cheese, and hand-smashed Angus patties seared to crispy perfection. How do I tell my favorite burger it's been replaced? Easy. You don't. It's a burger. It has no feelings. The all-new Sonic Smasher. Try it as a double or a triple. Live free. Eat Sonic. See menu for details. Nebraska Mid-America Network News. I'm Andy Hoosier. An investigation is still ongoing after Omaha police say that a shooting critically injured a teenage boy at a high school yesterday. As KSN News reports, that families rushed to the Omaha Northwest High School after the school resource officer reported the shooting that happened right around lunchtime. According to the Omaha Police Deputy Chief Sherry Thomas, they say the officers quickly responded and believe that the shooting was an isolated incident between two individual students. The suspect in the shooting was arrested three blocks away from the school roughly a half hour later. In the aftermath, one 15-year-old boy was critically injured in the shooting and has been rushed to a hospital. During the incident, two nearby Catholic schools, both Marion and Ron Kalia High Schools, were locked down after the shooting, but the lockdowns were lifted after 
after the arrest of the individual. According to law enforcement, so far no one else was injured in the shooting and no other individuals have been involved in the incident. The investigation is still ongoing. Mid-American Network News. A lot of homes built in the 90s still have their original siding and windows. If this is you, then call Burwell Construction at 316-794-3430. New siding and windows can make your house more energy efficient. Burwell Construction has been a trusted name for thousands of homeowners. Call them today, 316-794-3430, and let Burwell Construction give you a free estimate on windows and siding. And Burwell Construction will take care of all your guttering needs. Find them online at BurwellConstruction.com. If it's Burwell, it's Burwell. Burwell Construction. Hoppers Plus Truck and RV, your RV headquarters, now offers Rhino Linings Eco Coat, a spray-on roof lining to protect your RV from daily wear. It's 100% seamless, won't crack or peel, UV resistant, lasts three times longer than a rubber roof with a Toppers Plus lifetime leak-free guarantee. Shop in-stock accessories including sewer and electrical items, freshwater hoses, stabilizing kits, lock kits, AC filter parts, and RV decor. Get your free RV roof inspection at Toppers Plus Truck and RV, 333 Northwest Street or toppersplusks.com. Make your truck work for you! Reporting local news, I'm Bruce Deerking. Marysville City Council met Monday and approved a pair of resolutions, including one limiting camping in the city park for not more than five consecutive days. Current regulation has allowed a loophole where staying longer term was an occasional issue, staying four days, leaving a day, and returning. A second resolution restricting camping in tents or trailers anywhere other than designated camping areas within city limits was passed unanimously. Approval was given for the Marysville High School Homecoming Parade Friday, September 27th at 1.30 and a student bonfire pep rally in the north parking above Lakeview Sports Complex Wednesday, September 25th. Approval was given for purchase of a new police vehicle in the 2025 budget for the low bid from Nebaha Valley Motors in the amount of $42,000. Kansas State School of Architecture students will be in Marysville today working on a project. Child care is a critical part of a thriving community, and the Washington Community Hospital will host a conversation this evening regarding development of a daycare. Community members are invited to a facilitated conversation as to ideas, suggestions, and input on next steps to help with the endeavor. The hospital has purchased a house as a daycare facility. The meeting begins 6.30 this evening at the Washington County Hospital Dining Room. Please enter through the basement double doors in the west parking lot. Big Give Gage County continues the annual fundraising campaign. Runs through September 12. In-person giving on Thursday at the Vintage Venue in Beatrice from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. and at the Heritage Inn in Wymore from 10 until 4. The online site is open for contributions to dozens of nonprofits and charitable causes, supporting arts, culture, humanities, community and economic development, education, environment, human services, public benefit, religious, youth, and recreation. That website is biggivegage.org. In-person contributions will be accepted Thursday. An injury accident was reported in Nemo Hall County Friday morning shortly before 10 a.m. Joseph Robke, age 86 of Seneca, apparently failed to yield and was struck by a semi driven by John Holsing, age 56 of Seneca, at the intersection of 96th and Q Road. Robke was transported to Nemahal Valley Community Hospital. Holsing was not injured. A grazing management workshop will be held at the Save Farm near Riley, September 18th and 19th. And we'll cover how you can get the most benefit from your pasture land while preserving the health and vitality of grass. Free workshop is for anyone currently engaged in land management and grazing activities and will be taught by experienced NRCS specialists and other grazing educators. Advanced registration is appreciated. RSVP with names, email address, and phone number to mary at kglc.org or contact Mary Howell at 785 562 8726. Please note your type of agricultural operation and level of experience. Lunch is included both days. The workshop, September 18th and 19th, will be led by David Kraft and Doug Spencer, as well as other grazing and livestock educators. Kraft is a rangeland management specialist. 
and coordinator of the Kansas Grazing Lands Coalition. Spencer currently serves as the state grazing specialist for NRCS in Kansas. Your news on your time, a podcast of the morning and midday news blocks are available each day, Monday through Fridays, on our website at kndyradio.com and our social media. Tammy K. Fredericks, two-year-old infant daughter of Ryan and Melissa Fredericks, passed away September 6th. Funeral service, Thursday, 10 a.m. at the Marysville Methodist Church, burial in Zion Mount Calvary Cemetery, north of Herkimer. Visitation Wednesday, 5 until 9. Family will greet friends Wednesday from 5 until 7 at Kinsley Mortuary in Marysville in charge of arrangements for infant Cammy Fredericks. John D. Klepper, age 80, of Pawnee City, passed away September 7th. Funeral service Thursday, 10 a.m. at the Faith Baptist Church, Pawnee City, in Termit and the Dubois Cemetery. Visitation Wednesday, 9 until 8. Family will greet friends Wednesday from 6 until 8 at the Wherry Mortuary Pawnee City in charge of arrangements for John Klepper. Dennis E. Rockwell, age 81, of Marysville, passed away Tuesday. Funeral service Saturday, 10 a.m. at the Evangelical United Church of Christ in Marysville. Burial in the Marysville City Cemetery. Kinsley Mortuary of Marysville in charge of arrangements for Dennis Rockwell. Harold L. Hewley, age 94, passed away Sunday. Funeral service Saturday at 2 at the United Presbyterian Church in Blue Rapids. Burial in the Czech Moravian Cemetery south of Blue Rapids. Visitation Friday, noon until 8. Family will greet friends Friday from 6 until 8 at the Christy Anders Funeral Home in Waterville in charge of arrangements for Harold Hula. Joanne Lacey, age 87, of Marysville, passed away September 7. Funeral service Monday, 11 a.m. at Kinsley Mortuary in Marysville. Burial in St. Gregory's Catholic Cemetery. Kinsley's in charge of arrangements for Joanne Lacey. Jerry R. Mettler, age 85, of Blue Rapids, passed away September 8. A private nurnment service will be held at a later date with the Christy Anders Funeral in Waterville, in charge for Jerry Mettler. Have you ever thought about the impact your broadband provider has on our children's educational experience? In today's world, our schools and students rely on broadband internet more than ever for teaching, for interacting, to bring outside expertise into our small schools, and to open up our students' worlds. At Blue Valley Technologies, we believe our students deserve all of the resources in the world, one of the many reasons why we stand by in building robust fiber networks. We wish all the students, families, and educators we serve a successful school year. We are proud to keep you connected. Fundamental and advanced computer classes will be offered at all the Marshall County Public Libraries, including Marysville Public Library, in September and October. Classes are free of charge starting September 10th, including guidance from expert instructors. Call the library at 785-562-2491 for more information and to register for classes. Here's your KNDY weatherology forecast for northeast Kansas and southeast Nebraska. Sunshine today with our highs in the upper 80s and lower 90s. Mostly clear skies overnight tonight with our lows in the upper 50s and lower 60s. More sunshine throughout Thursday with our highs in the mid to upper 80s. And mostly clear skies over Thursday night with our lows in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Still sunny throughout the day on Friday with our highs in the mid to upper 80s, then mostly clear skies on a Friday night with our lows in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Mostly sunny skies over Saturday with our highs in the lower to mid 80s, and mostly clear skies on a Saturday night with our lows in the upper 50s and lower 60s. Still some sunshine throughout the day on Sunday with our highs in the mid to upper 80s, then partly cloudy skies throughout Sunday night with our lows in the upper 50s and lower 60s. More sunshine in a Monday with our highs in the mid 80s. Then partly cloudy skies into Monday night with our lows in the lower to mid 60s. And still staying sunny as we head into next Tuesday with our highs in the mid to upper 80s. Then clear skies Tuesday night. I'm meteorologist Kara Foster. Average high temperature, mid-September 83, record high on this date 107. The average low 59, the record low 36. Sunset this evening 742, sunrise in the morning at 705. Can you raise an earth-friendly baby with disposable diapers? We will try to pin down an answer today on the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report. If you're a farmer or rancher, chances are you've thought about joining Kansas Farm Bureau. So what's stopping you? 
Your membership means you have a seat at the table when it comes to the issues that affect your farm. Things like trade, taxes, water, and regulations. The state's largest farm advocacy organization brings your message to policy decision makers at the county, state, and national level. The Voice of Agriculture becomes your voice and fights for Kansas farmers and ranchers. And a Kansas Farm Bureau membership includes other benefits. For about $50 a year, you'll receive discounts on equipment and supplies, cell phone plans, financial and legal support, home and office supplies, and more. You'll also receive Kansas Living, a quarterly lifestyle magazine featuring real stories of farmers and producers around the state, plus great recipes, crafts, and things to see and do in Kansas. Join us today. Visit kfb.org slash farmer rancher to learn more. With more practical tips and useful advice, this is the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report for Wednesday, September 11th. Patriot Day is the 255th day of the year, and singer Harry Connick Jr. has a birthday. September has become the most popular birth month in America. A good time, we think, to revisit the question of cloth versus disposable diapers. Which are better for the environment? There's no clear-cut winner. The anti-disposable folks say that the estimated 5,000 diapers a child will use before being potty trained is too much for our landfills. Cloth diaper critics say the energy and water it takes to launder diapers offsets the reusable advantage. Cloth proponents argue that line drying and combining laundry loads can mitigate energy and water use. Environmental concerns, of course, are just one factor to consider before you reach the bottom line. And that is the Old Farmer's Almanac Radio Report. Learn more at almanac.com. Kansas Mid American Network Sports. I'm Andy Hoosier. It is day number three and game number three of the Kansas City Royals on the road taking on the New York Yankees. They finish up that three game series before heading out as well down to Pennsylvania. The Kansas City Royals are coming off a strong sweep over the Minnesota Twins as they ended up shutting them out in games number one and three and winning in game number two by a four to two victory overall. That put the Royals back into that number two slot for the American League Central. Right now at 79 and 65, just uh, two wins away from matching the Cleveland Guardians at that number one slot at 81 and 62. After tonight, Kansas City heads back on the road again to take on the Pirates in Pittsburgh as that goes through a three-game series starting on Friday through the weekend with first pitch on Friday evening at 540. The Pirates are at the bottom of the National League Central. They're sitting at 67 and 76 for their overall record. Kansas City then coming back home to Kauffman Stadium on Monday next week, taking on the Detroit Tigers. Mid American Network Sports. Attention Wichita and surrounding communities. The September 10th sale at Midwest Kia is here, and you won't want to miss it. For a limited time, drive away in a brand new 2024 Kia Forte LXS for just $199 a month. That's right, only $199. Need something with a little more space? Check out the full-size 2025 Kia K5 LXS. Now available for just $299 a month. That's right, incredible payment options on both the Forte and the K5, but only during our September September 10th sale, or save up to $13,000 off MSRP on the EV9. With five different SUV models to choose from, there's something for everyone. Hurry in to the Big Take Sale at Midwest Kia or online at MidwestKia.com. Midwest Kia, a better way to buy. We want to see you in a Midwest Kia. See dealer for details. Offers in September 30th. Subject to credit approval. Excludes taxes and fees. Kansas City Chiefs are gearing up for week number two of the NFL regular season as they remain at home for week number two at Arrowhead Stadium, bringing the Cincinnati Bengals on Sunday for an afternoon kick at 325 as they are still relishing after their big victory in week one against the Baltimore Ravens with the team saying that it came down to just inches with being called out of bounds in that last drive. Hey, is the Chiefs football without a little bit of drama? I mean, you just can't turn your head away from the TV. When they say it's a game of inches, it might be shorter than that. That's a great football team, and I'm sure we'll see them again at some point in the playoffs. So now we, we're, we're happy with the win now, and he's got to wear white cleats next time. That's, what, that's, my, that's my advice for him. That audio from WIBW News. Quarterback Patrick Mahomes says he's also excited to see what the future holds for the team moving forward. We build all throughout the year and you, know, you can see Rasheed just kind of picked up right where he left off last year. Xavier made some big plays um, and so it's just we're going to continue to build and build and then hopefully get Hollywood back and uh, see what this offense can really be. Mid-American of Sports. You're tuned in to the TVL Rundown. A comprehensive weekly look at the athletics inside the Twin Valley League. 
DTVL Rundown is a service of BND Buildings in Axtell and the Citizens National Bank in Greenleaf. BND Buildings of Axtell specializes in post frame buildings. Give them a call for stud frame buildings with complete concrete and electrical work included. It's one call to get the job done. BND Buildings specializing in post frame building construction, plus repairs and more. Always free estimates. Give them a call, BND Buildings of Axtell, 785 294 BND Buildings at 785 294 Another reason to make the Citizens National Bank your bank. With the century of experience, you know you can count on us for convenient banking and personal service for people you know and trust. With extended hours and online banking for all your financial needs. Another reason to make the Citizens National Bank your bank. Welcome to the TVL Rundown with Max Blasky of KNDY Radio, joined with Jeff Ward's TVL Sports Spotlight. Jeff, it was a good week in the TVL once again, wasn't it? Oh, it was great. Fantastic. Between the cross-country runners, the volleyball players, and of course, on Friday night, we had another terrific Friday night of football. Uh, A lot of big teams took care of business on Friday and just keep rolling. Fun time of year with it. And you mentioned cross country there in the beginning. A lot of cross country teams got kicked off Saturday in Marysville. So a few of those top results or top runners from some area teams. Like you said, at Marysville, it was a very good day for some TVL teams. Uh, Keelan Rempe of Centralia finished in fifth. She goes 22 31. So a big run for her. Gracie Grable of Troy. And Kaya Franklin of Centralia finished seven and eight. Cora Thompson right behind her at twenty two fifty two. Actually, right through the top ten, uh, Claire Bussing as well as Mackenzie Baker of Washington County. So a lot of just fantastic runners. I think that's one sport that kind of gets overlooked in the Twin Valley League because we do have a lot of excellent runners, and it shows in the other sports throughout the league. Moving forward, more TVL meets coming up on Saturday. Where are a bunch of teams at this week? We have teams this week going on Saturday at Wamego. The Blue Valley Rams, Clifton Clyde, Donovan West, Frankfurt, and Valley Heights all in one meet there at Wamego. So, uh, again, a very exciting time, very exciting start to the year for some of these teams. Along with cross country, another busy fall sport, volleyball kicking in the full swing. As we get ready for kind of this week's schedule, what's it looking like? Yeah, on Saturday, there is a try at Clifton Clyde featuring Hanover and Lynn. Frankfurt hosts a full tournament. They have Care Paravel, Jackson Heights, Onega, and Washington County, as well as Valley Falls. That is a full tournament at Frankfurt. And one more on Saturday, Valley Heights travels to Riley County, so they'll play a little bit up in competition. Valley Heights likes to go down to that Riley County tournament. A lot of good volleyball coming up. Results there for you on the website. Candy Y also has volleyball wrap-ups on Thursday. So just checking last Friday's scores, Jeff, as we kind of wind down the segment here. Uh, a few blowout wins, a few expected wins, some good wins too. Um, one that we had on Candy Y, Central, you got the six-point win over Valley Heights. What were a few other standout scores from Friday evening? Yeah, a lot of really good games. Frankfurt. That Frankfurt game, seven touchdowns for Wes Anderson. That was incredible performance for him. Axtell did their thing. They do what they always do. But the big one to me was actually Hanover taking the road to El Saline. Hanover's really showing some things here in the first part of the season. And uh, that that looks like a team that is well-oiled and it uh, should be a lot of fun to watch. And I'm, I'm lucky that's the game that I am headed to on Friday night. So look forward to seeing the Wildcats in, in person. I'll have all of the updates from the Hill and Hanover and uh, look forward to seeing Matt Hoyer's team. I think that's going to wrap up the TVL rundown for today. Again, for Jeff Wirtz of the TVL Spotlight, Max Blasky, Candy Y Radio. We'll catch you all next week. You've been tuned in to the TVL Rundown. 
a weekly comprehensive look at the athletics inside the Twin Valley League. The TVL Rundown is a service of B&D Buildings in Axtell and the Citizens National Bank in Greenleaf. Friday Night Football, Kansas Jayhawks pregame show follows our evening news block on KNDY FM 95.5. Marysville, Bulldogs home opener hosting Hiawatha, 7 o'clock kick pregame coverage at 6.45 on AM 1570 FM 94.1, on air online, and on our free mobile app. Add a bit of grace and elegance to your shade garden with the help of Lady Ferns. Hi, I'm Melinda Myers, horticulturist and gardening expert. This shade lover can be found growing in moist woodlands, meadows, and ravines throughout North America, Europe, and Asia. The feathery fronds add texture and color to the garden. They combine nicely with other shade perennials, and the fine foliage contrasts nicely with the large leaves of hostas. The small leaflets that line the leaf stems of ferns are called pinnae. The lady fern has many cultivars divided into several categories based on these pinnae. Crested cultivars have fan-shaped tufts or tassels of pinnae at the end of the stem. The pinnae on cross cultivars crisscross along the stem, while the feathery group has more finely divided pinnae. Grow these beauties and fold a partial shade and moist, well-drained soil for best results. Check out our website for this and other gardening tips. Michael Bennett Trucking Incorporated encourages everyone to fly the flag at half-staff in honor of all those who lost their lives in the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Thank you to the military for continuing the fight against terrorism. From all of us at Michael Bennett Trucking Incorporated, over 40 years of service. Ryan's Barber Shop is open again and taking appointments Tuesday through Fridays from 9 to 5. Leave a message at the shop, 562-2815. That's 562-2815 for Ryan's Barber Shop in Marysville, now open and accepting appointments for haircuts. We've all seen a log cabin. Such structures were the norm for many Americans early in the country's history. But did you ever see a log cabin with the logs arranged vertically instead of horizontally? There are only a handful in the U.S., and most are here. It's this edition of the American Countryside. What's the first thing you do in the morning? For many farmers and ranchers, it's checking weather and market updates. Make AgWeb Daily Newsletter part of your morning routine. Not only bringing you essential news and weather updates, but also covering topics such as smart farming and agriculture's next generation. And each weekday, stay informed and stay ahead with AgWeb Market Weekly. Whether you're at home or in the field, AgWeb Market Weekly keeps you connected and competitive. Delivered straight to your inbox. Subscribe to both today at agweb.com slash newsletters and never miss a beat. I'm Tyne Morgan, host of U.S. Farm Report, the only weekend television show that features some of agriculture's biggest names. From custom commentary from John Phipps to the stories of antique iron with machinery Pete, to a list of more than 30 marketing analysts, our weekly program focuses on the topics that matter most to you. We invite you to join us each weekend for U.S. Farm Report, timely, trusted tradition. St. Genevieve, Missouri was established in the 1740s and settled mostly by French Canadians. As Jim Baker explains, you can still see much of the town that existed before the founding of this nation. St. Genevieve is a sleepy little place, and that's worked to our advantage over the years. There was no big sense of urban renewal. The houses that are here really represent a, a multiple period of historic importance, but we still have buildings built in the 1700s that are used as private residences today. And it's an amazing testament to the fact that so much of that architecture is still being used in the way it was originally intended. One of the homes preserved here is the Felix Valley home. Mr. Valley ran a business from part of his house. It's called Menard and Valley. And we've restocked the store here with the different goods you would have seen for sale in about 1830. A lot of manufactured goods from the east shipped here by steamboat but then quite a bit of material that would have been imported as well. They also have a very rare piece of French architecture preserved here. It's the Beauvais Amaro House. That building is built in the style that the French were using in the colonial period for their architecture. And the French were known in this region for their vertical log buildings. So in a sense, these are log cabins, but the French used the logs in the walls vertically as opposed to horizontally, which we're used to seeing in the United States. There are three of those vertical log buildings in St. Genevieve, a true treasure since there are only five others known to exist in the rest of the nation. Many of the buildings are part of the Felix Valley State Historic Site. Traveling the countryside in St. Genevieve, Missouri. 
I'm Andrew McRae. There will be a household auction with furniture, appliances, and miscellaneous, as well as real estate in Waterville, selling for the Gail Repke Family Trust, Saturday, September 14th, 10 a.m. Appliances include a top-load washer and electric dryer, 20-cubic foot upright freezer, 18-cubic foot refrigerator, easy-go golf cart with charger. Furniture includes a china hutch, dining table, four swivel roller chairs, three-cushion couch, Lazy Boy oversized recliner, two king pillow top beds, couple of chest of drawers, small kitchen appliances, patio table with six wicker armchairs, some hand tools, lawn and garden supplies, and miscellaneous. Real estate sells at noon. It's a modern two-bedroom, two-bath, ranch style, with full unfinished basement, attached oversight, two-car garage on a shaded corner lot. For inspection, contact Olmstead Real Estate. This real estate and household auction, Saturday, September 14th, begins at 10 a.m. at 206 North Colorado in Waterville. Real estate, a house sells at noon. Olmstead and Sandstrom will be the auctioneers. One of the biggest challenges of being a wild duck is finding suitable habitat. Hi, I'm Jody Henke. Ducks need grasslands and wetlands to nest and raise their brood as you're living the country life. Living the Country Life, ideas and inspiration for your place in the country. You can find more information on today's topic and from previous shows by visiting us online at livingthecountrylife.com. We'll return to the show after these messages. Check out our full lineup of successful farming podcasts. The Successful Farming Podcast goes in-depth into the topics that affect farmers and ranchers. The 15 Minutes with a Farmer Podcast offers a quick conversation between an editor and a farmer. The SF Shorts podcast offers bite-sized interviews about agricultural topics. And the SF Daily podcast covers commodity markets, weather, and the big things happening in agriculture each morning. Search for Successful Farming wherever you download your podcasts. If you're looking for ideas and inspiration for your place in the country, register for the Living the Country Life newsletter. You'll receive helpful tips and information about a wide variety of seasonal topics, including pets, livestock, gardening, machinery, and more, delivered straight to your inbox twice each month. Sign up for your newsletter today at agriculture.com. I see wild ducks all the time around a lake near my home, and I've noted several species that come back year after year. Unfortunately, vital duck habitat is quickly disappearing in the United States. Conservation efforts by landowners are the key for nesting waterfowl. Jennifer Cross is a communication specialist with Ducks Unlimited. She says in general, ducks require two habitats during the breeding part of their life cycle, grassland and wetland. They're using the grasslands for nesting, and then when the ducklings hatch, they don't stay in the nest very long. So as soon as their feathers are dry, they go straight to a wetland. And that's where they're finding the seeds that they eat from the plants. They're eating all kinds of aquatic insects and bugs in those wetlands. They're using that for feather growth and to develop. Based on their nesting habitat preferences, ducks are grouped into three categories. Over water nesting species, upland nesting, and cavity nesting. Some species will nest in more than one type of habitat. For example, mallard ducks mostly set up housekeeping in grassland cover, but are also known to use artificial nesting structures and even the occasional backyard flower pot. Cross says you can start providing habitat by managing grasses. Having some kind of regime where they'll go in and pay it outside of the breeding time. And then they can also do wetland restoration. If you have an area where a wetland's been drained, a lot of times it just involves plugging up that drain and just letting the water come. There are federal programs and conservation organizations that offer technical and financial assistance to landowners for providing duck habitat. Learn more about helping the ducks at livingthecountrylife.com. I'll see you in the country. Living the Country Life, ideas and inspiration for your place in the country. You can find more information on today's topic, share your tips, and post photos by visiting us online at livingthecountrylife.com. 
Hamish Trucking Incorporated will always remember the tragic events of 9-11 that changed America forever and would like to take this time to honor all the victims of that day and the families who they left behind. From Hamish Trucking Incorporated in Seneca, commercial trucking and truck and trailer repair. Smith Auto recalls the tragic events of 9-11 that took thousands of men, women, and children away from their families. This Patriot Day, take a moment of silence to remember them. From all of us at Smith Auto in Pawnee City, we offer quality used auto parts, full or self-serve, front-end alignments, and we buy scrap iron. Cook and Company will never forget the events of 9-11 and holds the victims close to heart. Cook and Company and Seneca, offering one of the widest selections of interior and exterior wood doors in North America and quality handcrafted cabinetry that will add beauty to every room in your home. Albert Einstein is often credited with saying the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. I am Rob West with your Faith and Finance Minute. We often ignore symptoms that reveal the need for change, especially with our finances. Here are some examples. Worrying that you'll bounce a check. Cringing every time the phone rings because it might be a bill collector. Paying a reconnect fee to the utility company to get services back on. Fighting with your spouse about money on a regular basis and regretting that you can't be as generous as you'd like. Those are the symptoms. The solution is deciding to live by God's financial principles. We can help. You'll find everything you need to know at faithfi.com. Manage your finances wisely with the easy-to-use FaithFi app. Download FaithFi, Faith and Finance from your app store or learn more at faithfi.com. Cover crops and livestock are a winning combination for soil health. That's ahead on Farm to Fork. If you're ready to try a highly effective microbial soil inoculant, then Rhizol from ProGrow Bio should be your first choice. Rhizol offers multiple benefits like enhanced biomass, bigger yields, and improved soil health. 100% organic and works with conventional or organic crops and comes in a soluble dry form for easy handling and long shelf life. Search the web for R-H-I-Z-O-L from ProGrow Bio. Hey there, it's Mike Rowe, and if you're out there getting dirty, do me a favor and remember to call or click 811 before you dig. And when I say dig, I refer to any activity requiring boring, tilling, drilling, probing, reaming, plowing, drudging, or even scoping. Anything that causes you to roll up your sleeves a little and dig in requires you to first connect with 811 so that you can avoid all those buried pipes, wires, and cables underground. To sum up, call or click 811 before you dig and visit safeexcavator.com for more information. Not all farms are suited to this, but the practice of grazing livestock on cover crops appears to be a good thing in no-till systems. That's according to researchers at Kansas State University. Agronomist Logan Simon. We actually did see a significant increase in soil organic carbon stocks, as well as soil potassium in our grazed areas compared to our ungrazed areas. Simon indicated the on-farm study was started in 2018 in central and western Kansas. During that time frame, there was still a lot of concern that grazing cover crops, especially on our no or conservation till acres, could cause some negative impacts in terms of soil health, that we could lose some of the benefits that we expect from cover crops for soil health and also some concerns about compaction. The timing for cover crop planting is important, says Simon. For folks looking to integrate cover crops and looking to integrate grazing, I would consider good planting windows where you're able to plant that cover crop, get it up and get some biomass out there to graze on during the time of year that maybe would complement your existing forage resources. That's Farm to Fork. I'm Daryl Anderson. Good Wednesday. Sam's back with your latest agricultural news here on the Mid-America Ag Network. Well, Agricultural Secretary Tom Vilsack from the USDA gave visiting Farmers Union members a progress report on the new USDA packers and stockyard rules. Uh, we've actually proposed four rules and we're, and we're working on a fifth. 
The first two rules, uh, the transparency rule that uh, primarily in the poultry uh, line, basically requiring more information from those that we're doing business with, the integrators, so that you know that you're doing business with somebody that's going to be able to do what they say they're going to do. That, fi- that rule is final. Um, the market integrity rule that basically said you can't discriminate, you can't retaliate, that rule is final. The poultry tournament uh, rule that basically tried to create a, a leveler playing field and a fairer t- tournament system, the comment period ex- uh, ended on uh, August the 6th of this year, so we're just in the process of reviewing those um, those comments, and the goal is to get that finalized before the end of the year. Uh, the fair competition rule and harm to competition, which is a big one, uh, the comment period on that uh, ends up this week, uh, 9-11, uh, Wednesday. Uh, and once that, we'll get all the comments, we'll assemble them, we'll analyze them, we'll f- polish the rule up a little bit, and then propose it for final. And, and again, the goal here is to try to get all this done uh, before the end of this administration. Uh, we're also working on a price discovery uh, for fed cattle rule, uh, which may be um, uh, not a rule, but, but an indication of where we think the rule ought to go, and we're working on that, and hopefully we get that out publicized for consideration uh, before the end of the year. That's USDA Ag Secretary Tom Vilsack, and I'm Seb Speck on the Mid-America Ag Network. The Kansas State Fair is back, and you can't have a great fair without great food. Don't forget to stop by Pop's Place at 315 Grandstand Avenue on the State Fairgrounds and have that wonderful State Fair food that everyone talks about. Come by Pop's Place in the morning and have pancakes or even biscuits and gravy, along with hot coffee or even cold-flavored coffee. And in the afternoon, join us for our homemade lunches like the Hawaiian Porky or the Gobbler Sandwich and so much more. Don't forget to hurry into Pop's Place only at the Kansas State Fair. Place. It's not just any food, it's fair food. Cattle farmers, are you looking to sell your cattle? Let us help. Here at Double T Livestock in Kingman, Kansas, come to our office and relax, enjoy lunch on us, and watch the Superior Livestock Auction as we help with selling of your cattle. Call Troy today at 620-491-3312 or stop by the office at 805 East D Avenue in Kingman, Kansas to figure out how to get your cattle on the auction. Double T Livestock. There will be a land auction, 703 acres Marshall County farmland, selling for the Brocksterman Trust Friday, September 13th in Frankfurt, and includes crop and pasture land to be sold in five tracts. Tract 1 is 237 acres more or less, the west edge of Lillis, west of the tracts along 27th Road and Bobcat Lane. 201 acres of crop land in Cleveland Township, 85% 85% half bottom ground and half terraced with a balance in timbered grassland along Irish Creek. Track 2 is 61 acres more or less, adjoining Track 1 west of the tracks at Lillis and starts three-quarter mile north of Bobcat Lane. 88% Irish Creek bottom, the balance in timber along Irish Creek, all cropland is in one field. Track 3 is 90 acres more or less, fenced pasture with pond water located a mile west of Lillis on Bobcat Lane, which is along a good rock road five miles east of K99. Track 4 is 159 acres more or less southwest of Lillis in Cleveland Township. 33 acres crop land, the majority in a fenced pasture with two ponds. And Track 5 is in Clear Fork Township, 156 acres more or less, 5 miles south of Frankfort, then a mile west on Apache Lane to 21st Road. This property has roads all around it, and over half crop land includes some hay meadow, grassland, pond, and timber. For inspection and details, contact Olmstead Real Estate. Sale bills online at olmsteadrealestate.com. The land auction, Friday, September 13th in Frankfurt, begins at 10 a.m. at the Frankfurt Legion VFW. Reduce machinery costs by jointly owning the equipment with another farmer. Sharing spreads the cost over more acres on Successful Farming Radio. Successful Farming Radio. Providing information farmers need in the field, in the shop, and in the office. Committed to growing your business in agriculture. Check out our full lineup of Successful Farming podcasts. The Successful Farming podcast goes in-depth into the topics that affect farmers and ranchers. The 15 Minutes with a Farmer podcast offers a quick conversation between an editor and a farmer. The SF Shorts podcast offers bite-sized interviews about agricultural topics. And the SF Daily Podcast covers commodity markets, weather, and the big things happening in agriculture each morning. 
search for Successful Farming wherever you download your podcasts. Interact with Successful Farming on social media. Like us on Facebook at Successful Farming USA and follow us on X at Successful Farm for tips, ideas, timely news, and information from our editors. Find us on Instagram at Successful underscore Farming and love the latest photo or video. And take a look behind the scenes with our editors on TikTok at Successful underscore Farming. Lower the debt load of owning and maintaining farm equipment by sharing it with another farmer. Splitting the use and costs of farm equipment is one way to add precious dollars to the bottom line and maybe even give you back a few extra hours in those long days. Melissa O'Rourke is an Extension Farm and Agribusiness Management Specialist at Iowa State University. She says there are many scenarios where a sharing agreement would work. One is between an aging farmer and a farmer in the early stages of their career. Maybe you need new equipment or you need upgraded equipment, but are you at a point that you want to make that investment late in the career? Well, here's a place where you can partner with somebody else who is maybe more at beginning or mid-career of farming, and you can share that so that older, more mature farmer can continue farming for a little longer but not have to make those kinds of equipment investments. The costs of jointly owning machinery should be shared equitably. Talk about things such as the acquisition of equipment, storage, costs of insurance, and maintenance. Put your agreement down in writing because human memory is not perfect. Have an attorney look it over to make sure that the language is understandable. Oftentimes, people might talk about something, even put it in writing, and not realize that the language isn't quite as clear as it should be. And then when you have, you know, maybe a very expensive repair, that's when a disagreement can come up. I'm Jody Henke. Read more about ways to share farm equipment at agriculture.com. Everything's a little better when it's super. Heroes, markets, sized, and of course, checks. A super check gives you an in-depth review of your current insurance coverage with a Farm Bureau Financial Services agent, no matter who your insurance provider is. That's super cool. Talk to a Farm Bureau agent to make sure you're properly covered at fbfs.com slash protect. It's your future. Let's protect it. Farm Bureau Property and Casualty Insurance Company, Western Agricultural Insurance Company. From Kansas State University, this is Agriculture Today. I'm Shelby Varner. Occasional tillage can be a management tool that growers can implement into their cropping systems. K-State Extension agronomist Logan Simon discusses the impacts that occasional tillage can have for crop fields. He explains occasional tillage and how it is used in systems versus strategic tillage. I think it's important to start out in in differentiating strategic tillage versus what we call occasional tillage. And strategic tillage really is a reactive approach. We identify that the problem is there. We're going out and we're doing this uh, strategic tillage operation to address it. And then returning to no-till, there's no really set schedule of when we're going to come back in with a follow-up tillage pass. We're responding to that present issue. Occasional tillage is a little bit different in that the way that we've been practicing occasional tillage is more on a set schedule in a three-year crop rotation. Simon says how often they tilt the fields in a crop rotation. We're thinking about that three-year wheat sorghum fallow rotation. And so for this system, we're going out and we're doing a one or two passes of tillage every three years in a set rotation here. So two out of three years, we're maintaining that no-till, but then going in and doing tillage at that time. In this way, on a schedule, we're trying to be a little bit more proactive, as you might think of it, where we're going in and and doing this on on a more set time frame. In the research, they wanted to see the impact occasional tillage had on soil properties. We looked at some physical properties related to aggregate stability, of course, compaction, those things that people um, think about when they think of, you know, purposes for tillage. And we really didn't see much impact at all. There was some trend towards a little bit of a reduction in what we call penetration resistance, which is a measure of the amount of force required to penetrate through the soil. So it did look like we were kind of reducing that with our 
or occasional tillage. So increasing a little bit, a little bit of tilth there relative to no-till. But otherwise, we didn't see much difference. So our aggregate stability was solid across treatments, as was soil organic carbon or uh, organic matter in our in our other uh, available nutrients. So very little difference across the board there. That was K-State Extension agronomist Logan Simon on how occasional tillage impacted the soil in a dry land cropping system. Learn more about strategic and occasional tillage by going to the e-update from August 22nd, which can be found at eupdate.agronomy.ksu.edu. I'm Shelby Varner, and this has been Agriculture Today over the K-State Radio Network. During the summer months, flies can cause severe stress and annoyance to your livestock, leading to decreased weight gain and milk production. One stop at Valley Vet Supply in Marysville solves all those problems. From fly tags, dust control, spray, pour-on options to liquid and solid feed solutions. Applicator options include cattle rubs and mineral feeder lids that coat the head of your cattle with insecticide. Protect your herd and livelihood this season with one stop at Valley Vet Supply in Marysville. Valley Vet Supply. Market information from the Mid-America Ag Network. I'm Andy Hoosier as we move through a Wednesday today. Market's getting ready to wrap up here in just a little bit. Been kind of a mixed day across the board overall as we move through here. We started off kind of mixed with the grains and the livestock. We're still seeing things a little bit mixed. Corn's been struggling, kind of teetering on either end right now. September corn's up one and three quarters at 381 and a quarter. December corn down by a half a cent at 403 and three quarters of a cent. In the wheat market, September KC wheat down nine and three quarters. That's almost off the board at 570 even a bushel. The December is down in the green by six cents at 590 even. Oats market today, December down a quarter of a cent at 367 and a quarter. Over in the soybean market, September in the green three quarters of a cent. That's about off the board as well at 978 and a quarter. November up four and a half at 1001 and three quarters of a cent. Soybean meal for September up two and a half at three thirteen even. October's up two eighty at three sixteen and ten cents. Soybean oil for October thirty four cents in the red at thirty nine ninety five. September's off the board at forty and eighty five cents. In the canola market, November in the green three dollars and ten cents at five seventy three ten. January up three ten as well at five eighty six thirty. And the cotton market near mostly higher with December up a dollar fifty six at sixty nine seventy seven. The March up a dollar fifty one at seventy one and thirty five cents. So uh, mostly higher across the board there. Looking at your U.S. dollar index today, September's up four pennies at one hundred one sixty four. The December up five pennies at one hundred one and twenty nine cents. Thirty year bonds for September up slightly right now at one twenty seven thirty. The December down a little bit at one twenty six twenty. Ten year notes are slightly in the red. Not a whole lot of movement there though at one fourteen twenty six. And a half stock market today. They started off mostly lower, kind of mixed right now. The Dow Jones, though, still down 182 points at 40,553. Do you or don't you? There's only one way to protect your crops, and that's to insure your crops with PNB Insurance in Wichita. Anyone can sell crop insurance. The difference is how you're treated when you have a claim. Experience and knowledge are the key to picking the right company to do business with. Call Ron and Dan Pilecki. They know agriculture, and if you have a claim, they aren't satisfied until you're satisfied. Call PNB Insurance today, 1-800-722-9525. The outdoors are calling, and it's time to get off the road. Now's the time to visit Wichita Tractor for work or play. Wichita Tractor is your home for anything from bad boy mowers to New Holland, Kubota, Land Pride, Polaris, and so many more. Plus, you can shop new or pre-owned and make sure to check out their parts department. It's Wichita Tractor. Locations in Wichita and Hutchinson. Online at wichitatractor.com. And make sure to see their booth this year at the Kansas State Fair. Wichita Tractor. It's time Bob to Bob get- and Georgina at After Hours Feed Supply carry Neutrina and ADM feeds for all of your pet and livestock needs. They also now stock Lindy Spring Water Softener Salt. Open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 9 p.m., Saturday, 8 to 5, open Sundays when they're home. If they don't have the feed you're looking for, let them know they'll try to find it. Stop by and see After Hours Feed Supply, now stocking Lindy Spring Water Softener Salt at the west edge of Blue Rapids on Highway 9, or give them a call at 363-7344. 
From ABC News, Wall Street Now. The Consumer Price Index shows prices 2.5 percent higher in August than a year ago, beating economists' expectations. The main driver for the higher inflation reading was housing. The index for shelter rose half a percent last month. That report has dimmed hopes for an aggressive interest rate cut from the Fed. And so going into the midday, the Dow Jones was down 560 points. The Nasdaq was lower by seven-tenths of one percent. The S&P was off one percent. Our buying power is just about back to pre-pandemic levels. The Census Bureau reports the median American income adjusted for inflation is now a little over $80,000 on the cusp of levels we hit in 2019. Campbell's Soup isn't just soup anymore, and now its leaders are considering changing the name. Executives at the food and snack maker are asking shareholders to change the company's name to The Campbell Company. Jim Ryan, ABC News. Bottled water for your home or business is available through water conditioning of Seneca. Let Keith Haverkamp provide you with the purified Lindy Spring bottled water. You can rent the water dispenser from them, or they can sell you on. They'll set up a delivery schedule and keep you supplied with no hassles and great drinking water. You'll love the water and the service they provide. It's top notch. For quality bottled water service and delivery, call Water Conditioning of Seneca today. CNK Services appreciates the military, first responders, and volunteers who entered the rubble on 9-11 to search for survivors. Please raise the flag on September 11th to honor them and remember the fallen. From the patriotic staff of CNK Services in Sabatha, always proud to support the United States military. This Patriot Day, Laughlin Hoovit Funeral Home recalls the tragic events of 9-11 that took thousands away from their families. This Patriot Day, take a moment of silence to remember them. From Laughlin Hoovit Funeral Home at 505 North 9th Street, serving Wymore with dignity. Proud to support the troops. Beatrice Health and Rehab remembers the tragic attack on 9-11 and knows the men and women of the military continue the fight against terrorism. From your proud supporters at Beatrice Health and Rehab, just three blocks north of the water tower, enhancing the lives we touch by providing compassionate quality care. From Wilbur to Tuttle Creek, we play the Blue Valley's best country. 95.5 KNDY-FM, Marysville. Now, ABC News.